Hello everybody, welcome to today's pottery video. Today I got an interesting one for you. I got another uh, short uh, pottery music video. I got uh, object history for you guys. Today I got a cup that sort of became a sculpture. So that's kind of exciting. And then, um, what else do I got? I got a cup, a mug, coolest memory. I think I got some cool video footage of me talking about my process and like what I'm thinking about. I finally realized that I have a GoPro on my head, so I'm sort of giving you some more in-depth vision and view on like the actual things that I'm doing. And so I think today's video is a little bit better than yesterday's video in that regard. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll let you guys get to the uh, the rest of this little intro and then uh, into the, the video itself. Thank you guys so much for watching again. All the best. Strong mentality. See you in a second. Peace. Shot glass. Wake up, my heart. Wake up, my blood. Wake up, my love. Wake up, wake up, wake up, my heart. Wake up, my blood. Wake up, my love. Wake up, wake up, my heart. My blood, my love. For you, for you. We're back. Hey, guys. Oh, so much stuff happened recently, um, but the most pressing is that I freaking just made the coolest freaking uh, tree form that I've made in a while, and it's going to be in an edited short music video, a short music video here, and I'm like, oh my gosh, guys, I can't even tell you how pumped up I am for it, it's like, I don't even know what the word is. It's just a, it's a big deal when uh, I've been like putting a lot of hours into the editing. And so when I get like a first try, like really great looking pot that's unique. And I feel like it's gonna like really do some solid, like, uh, it's, what do I mean? What do I mean solid, solid what? I think I mean more like, it's just, it's nice to edit something that you you think is really cool, right? I mean, I think all my pods are cool, don't get me wrong, but this one feels fresh. It feels like one that like I seldom see. And so getting to edit something like that is like, really freaking pumps me up. My camera died, so I don't know how clean the edit is gonna be. So that's a little bit disappointing, but uh, again, that's, that's all part of the process here and it's gonna happen like that sometimes so I hope that it didn't cut out all the cool stuff right but uh, we'll see we'll see right but you guys will see that later on in the video here and then I also did a cool little uh, I did an object history uh, today as well and I think that one's just looks really great and so I'm excited to show you guys uh, like this object I I forget how many objects I've like weird little one-off objects I make that are from like a series, but I don't get to like talk about them too often. And so it's just kind of exciting. There you go. This one almost lost itself. This is all the, this I re-wedged all that clay that I messed up uh, working on yesterday. And so, it's just kind of nice to uh, use it again and it's like the perfect hardness so I can get some nice height and it was like six uh, balls of clay that I screwed up on but I wedged them up into four balls so it's a little bit more clay so I can get some more height so hopefully I can show that off and not mess up for you guys today um, and I think too I just remember that I have the opportunity 
to, okay, to show you guys what I see more, right? Because of the head camera, so I remember that. So right here, if this ever happens to you when you're coning up, right? Look, you have this big hole. So if I kept coning up, it's gonna trap all this air in there, right? And there's water, like liquid, like slip and slurry in there. So then it's gonna like cause some problems later on. So what you wanna do is you actually wanna open that up, right? And so you see what I'm doing? I'm like cranking this out, right? And then I'm gonna be pushing this down at an angle. So you see my, my palm right here is pushing down right here. And then I'm gonna have my left hand push in Right? And then you see I lessen that hole, and so I'll do it again. Right? And then I got that angle, and I'm gonna push it up in. And then look at that, guys. Right? So no more hole, and so it's not gonna like cause wet clay to come, uh, or that wet slip to like mess you up later on, right? Or you, you're not gonna trap any air in that as well. And then you can see, too, when I'm gonna make this tall, cone is that I'm a little bit off the, I'm pushing it off centered. So if you look at the normal cam, you can see how I was angling it out a little bit, right? And so I'm pushing it off center to keep that bottom center, right? And then here I am just whipping that around, pushing that in and down, over, scoop that clay right back up, right? Get really good at moving that clay in your coning phase, and you're going to be freaking cruising when it comes to everything else, right? If you can really like learn how clay moves in this coning phase, it's gonna inform how you're gonna move clay later on. It might not seem like it's the same, but moving clay is the same. You are manipulating in a certain way. Clay is always moving where your hands aren't, just in different manifestations when you have an interior and an exterior rather than just exterior. Um, here I am, I'm pushing that down. And you can see that it's off center here, right? It's not wanting to stay on center. So we're going to try to scoop some of that up. Open this up here. And then I'm just going to bring down the hammer. And the hammer, you can push that you can, if you need to. I don't want to get clay on this. But you can push your, your, I can't really do it because I have this thing on my chest. But you can use it, use your chest, your body, to center this clay if you need to, right? Don't be opposed to doing that. All right, that's about as centered as we're going to get. You can see right now, it's not perfectly centered, right? That is okay. Because this next phase, and as we're pulling, we can actually pull it back on center. So I'm actually going to heighten that off-centeredness when I'm doing this part, right? And so you can see that that off-centeredness is starting to drag my finger, right? And wherever it's off-center, it's going to be taking more of that wet slurry off faster in that area, right? Because there's uh, more pressure on that spot than on others. And so you'll feel it dragging your fingers in a certain area. It will feel like the whole ring is dragging it. But in actuality, it's actually just one spot. You're just moving really fast, right? And we're going to do our little cup bar thing here. And I'm bringing my, you can see right here, look at my thumb. You can see my thumb right here. Make sure that's nice and lubricated with some water. But my thumb is actually coming up and into my palm, right? Up and in, up and into my palm. As my left hand, you can see, is pushing that, uh, that clay towards that center, right? Always be thinking of, it's coming up towards your nose if your nose was in the middle. Right, I'm usually hanging out on the sides here, but I imagine my nose is straight up, right? And it's always in the upside down ice cream cone. Always be thinking waffle cone, right? Because if you're spinning the clay, all right, look what's happening to the water. All right, do you see how it's going off? Centripetal force, right? Going all the way back to grade school on this one. Centripetal force is dragging that, that, um, that clay, anything that's spinning outwards, it's throwing it outwards, right? And so when you're coning up the clay and you're making your poles, right, it's naturally going to want to go out, right? That's why if you go really, really wide from the start, it might be really difficult to get it back in because it's just so wide, you'd have to have really big hands to be able to freaking get that back in or go really slow, right, to also get that back in, right? 
And so I always like to keep the clay pretty tight and I don't have the biggest hands in the world so this sort of helps me out here. I can get pretty narrow. But then again, here I am, I'm going down, I'm pushing that down. So that's all stuff that we would cut off of our clay, right? But I always say that that stuff has potential, right? That always has potential in everything that we do in ceramics. There's hidden potential all around. Why are we cutting it off? Why are we getting rid of it, right? And I think that that's like new, new age pottery is all about using, using that, that potential to do something with it, right? I think there's a lot of really strong metaphors that the style of like pottery can convey, especially to like a more modern audience to ceramics, right? All right, so I'm gonna go really thin. It's thin right here, so I'm not gonna do as much, right? And then af after I get past that thin part, here I am. Just taking that clay up. It's thin at the bottom, so what I'm doing there, right, if you look at my fingers here, they're not, they're not like really close and direct. At that moment, they're off each other a little bit because I don't want to stretch the clay as much. When you want to stretch your clay, you can do two things. Well, you can do a lot of things, right? But two of the things that stand out to me the most are the, your finger placement, right? You can have very separated and distant, or you can have close, right? You can have very drastic across each other or you can have very undrastic stretch and so those are the two like uh, factors that I usually alter whenever I'm throwing my clay that help me sort of make some new new adjustments I'm also going to lube up this uh, the outside of my pot here and then again I'm going to start coning this in right here got it a little bit off center but then again right if our rim is thick and our bottom is center, oh my gosh, we can push this back on center, not easily, but in an okay amount. So taking that water, pushing that all the way down the side of that pot, going from the bottom here. a little wonky on this top part that's okay and this is where if you wanted to make it smooth you would take your like a like a rib of some sort right like a metal rib or a wooden rib and you could get that back on center real quick um, but for now it's just a little bit thin in this area so I'm gonna leave it as is okay and now we're going to start. We can see that there's, well, you can't see because it's too dark. I realize that's the biggest difference is I don't have that overhead light that I had before. I do actually have an overhead light, but I haven't put a bulb in there yet, right? And so I'm going to fix that up for you guys later on uh, so you guys can see the interiors. I'm going to slow down. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two. Three, four, five, six. And I want to push these out. I want to start. I want to start getting them outward, right? And I feel how thin it is there. It's just wanting to rip right away. And so I'm going to start lifting up my fingers. It's already ripped, so I'll let it drop. But we have a nice twist, we have a drop. This is uh, very reminiscent of some of my other pots that I've made. So here, hold on, I'll show you guys one that, uh, I think I still have it. Um, so I'll get it and I'll show it to you guys quick. If I can find it. I gotta take my shoes off and go to the green screen area here. Um, yeah, okay, I see it. I just don't want to get a bunch of clay on it. Well, well, I can take this one. This one's pretty nice. So you guys can see that that... I just don't want to attract dust on that thing. But you can see on this one, I mean, look, right? The 
edge pulls down, right? I can bring it closer. Edge pulls down here, right? It flapped over here, right? And that ended up becoming something cool. You can see the glaze drip right on that side there. But you can see it drops down and pulls these closer. And that was, for me, that was potential to put these two knobs on the side. And then it has a high back, right? And so it has a direction to it already placed into the pot. And so that's something that's pretty cool. I'll just set that here for now. I'll put it back later. But that's actually like a pattern I've seen in ceramics when you're throwing like this is like, uh, and that's why I always say is ceramics, whoop, I don't want to go too fast. Like your body, right? You might think that all of your movements that you're doing are random, but if you do it long enough, well, not random, like, but when you're throwing like me, very like uh, gestural in a lot of ways, you might think it's all just random, like whatever happens, happens. But if you make enough of them, you start seeing these patterns, right? And there's almost like a ratio of patterns. That's why earlier when I, or when you guys, I mean, you guys will see the pot uh, later on, but that's why I was really excited that I had one that I don't really, I have not seen. So it hasn't really been in the percentage. I've had some pots kind of like it, but not like this one really, you know? Um, and so that's kind of like the cool part about this, uh, about ceramics and throwing like this is you could, and you just go by a mount, just make as much as you fucking can, right? And what you end up finding out is that your body, your way of throwing, your everything has a certain like pattern to how, or a ratio or a percentage, think like a pie graph, like 1% of the time it will turn out this way, right? Like you can start developing that um, in your own way, right? In your own art. And I think that's something that's really, really cool. It's almost like an investigation of self, right? And I, I mean, all art is like that to some degree, right? It's an investigation of how either like you're interpreting something or, uh, yeah, maybe it's just that. It's your interpretation of like something, right? And so for me, I'm trying to see like through these patterns that I'm developing and finding out about myself, I'm almost investigating myself, right? It's kind of a, a narcissistic thing, but I don't really mind. Look at that. It's like a Beyblade. Beyblade, Beyblade, let it rip. I don't know if you guys were around for that, but those were like really popular toys when I was a kid. That and Byakugan, which are like these little marble balls. Spinning, I think, does have a, like something that spins has some sort of like allure to kids, I think, right? Like think fidget spinners. For me, it was like Beyblades and I mean, Bakugan are kind of like a ball shaped thing, right? A lot of the things that we find interesting are things that spin, I think, right? And there's no mistake that it's also the galaxy spins, right? The world, it spins. So it's really cool that these these things that humans are interested in end up making their way into a lot of different parts of our culture and stuff in the universe. Look at that. All right, enough of that pseudo deep talk. <laughs> Where's that? There it is. Um, this one looks pretty good, though, guys. Pretty excited about this. And I think tomorrow's cup history, if I can rem or object history, I keep calling it cup history, all this other stuff is um, I'll show you guys one of these uh, flower pots that I make that's all about firing, changing the form, right? And so this is one where I would do it. I'd see this little hole here. I'd put a flower, ceramic flower in this, and it would droop down, and maybe it would droop forward facing, right? Or I could do the inverse, and then now the back becomes something. But I think I would do it forward over top, and hopefully it would rest right on here, right? And glaze maybe dripping out, right? There's so much potential with these pots you know, like I think vessels in general, right? They have a sort of uh, potential that's imbued in them, right? Just because they're empty, right? And I think that's a very beautiful thing. <clears throat> Something emptiness, right? Like it's always a, a spot or a moment or something that can be filled. It's really interesting to me. I mean, I like to fill rooms. One day I'd like to fill whole buildings and 
I've always kind of liked uh, things that need to be like uh, things that need to be filled, right? There's something about emptiness that I just really, really like. I feel like there's some le- there's some innate value, right, from nothing, than it being full of something, right? There's something that's just very alluring to me about that. Like even the games I play, like I play this game RimWorld pretty often. I saw on my, I don't know if any of you guys have Steam, but I saw my Steam um, Rewind. It's like kind of like Spotify does a Spotify Rewind of all the songs you listen to and, you know, all that jazz. Well, video games have now started to do that too, following the trends of culture, right? But uh, the game that I played the most was a game called RimWorld, right? I think it said I opened uh, the game. I played out of all the games I played. That like 27% of all my time playing games was was on that Rim World. Was the most was on the Rim World, right? So, but anyway, it's basically you get dropped into <clears throat> like a square map, right? And you, it's a empty. It has a bunch of resources, and you get like these little dudes who can harvest those resources and do things with them. And they all have different skills. So one guy might be really good at planting. And so you might find a fertile ground and you're gonna plant rice there to feed your colony, right? And that's important because if you don't have food, then how can they manage? But you can also go hunting and hunt like animals or, and maybe one of your guys has a really good shooting skill. So you give them a bow and you tell them to go hunt, right? Like it's kind of a really cool little game but again, it's all about like filling up a, a chunk, filling up a room, filling up a square. If you look at all my pots and like a lot of the, even in the intro of this video, they're all in squares, they're all in like, it's all pixels like, right? And so I think it's kind of cool. And I was doing some, a series of pots where like how many times does somebody have to see a similar pot before they all just blend together? And it's almost the same exact amount as like, what you'd see like uh, when it's like dots per square inch, right? Like they say like 72 DPI is when is like when your eye stops recognizing like like a lot of differences, right? And the same with uh, the next step up is 300. So 300 DPI and it's almost uh, unrecognizable, right? The little pixels. So it's really cool science behind some of that stuff that sort of makes its way in my ceramics in a very like loose ended way, right? Also, I need to be quicker here. I spent way too much time talking. Sorry about that, guys. One hand. <laughs> That's what I was doing, that little like walking thing is what I was doing in my short today. You'll see that. Oh, I didn't even do the, here, I'll do that quick. Um, I hope you guys, uh, right before we get it, before we finish this pot, I got a commercial coming at you guys. We got a new object history, really great, really excited to see you guys doing that. So here we are, see you guys in a second. Peace out, see you in a moment. Welcome everybody. Today we got a new object for you today for today's uh, object history. So this is actually, would you believe it or not, a cup, right? And this is back still when I was uh, still kind of doing a, uh, I used to do my rims where I'd pinch, right? And so this is right after that, right? Is when I would pinch, right? And create that little space in between. You see how it's a sharp little triangle? And then I would take my finger after that pinch and then bevel it in so then I could round this off and so it wasn't as sharp. I've realized that some of my older objects, the rims were just so sharp that they would just break really easily. They would chip uh, when things were stacked on them and stuff. So this was like one of the first ones where I was rounding it off. Uh, This was also at a time where I was trying to figure out what my cups looked like so I was getting really loose with them, right? And as this thing was drying, it, it totally ripped, right? So you can see that rippage right there. But, you know, this is also a time where I was like thinking about these objects, right? Like, you know, my tree forms, they get rips and that's like, in my mind, sometimes it adds to 
the actual form itself. And so this was like one of the earlier ideas of that stuff is when these, let's see if I can get it zoomed in here. Nice for you guys. This is one of those earlier pieces where something happened, it ripped and I was trying to sort of solve that failure of the, the pot with another addition. So I took these little terracotta little uh, chunks right here and I stabbed them onto the objects almost like it was, in my mind, it looked like it was, this is like an eye and this is a mouth and it's like opening its mouth up or something or the other way too. It's like, it's like opening a mouth up, like pushing its mouth open or pushing the object. It felt very animated. Um, and so that was my way of sort of going about uh, like failures at that time. And so this was, uh, there's a, I actually kind of have a series of pots that are sort of ripped and mangled. And so this is from that series and uh, it turned out okay, but the glaze, I'm telling you, the glaze is terrible. So this is a Shino glaze, but this is when the Shino glaze does not look good. This is like one of the worst Shino glazes I've seen you can see just how cold this object is. It just looks like, like, like ice or like gravel, right? I have another example of a Shino that turned out good. The interior Shino is actually not too bad, right? But this exterior Shino is just god awful. And so I'll show you, this is the same clay body, right? But one just got a good body reduction, the other didn't, right? And <laughs> look at that, like literally night and day. Right? Look how lush, warm, and what's another word? Like sexy this surface is, right? Like you can even see like these little like specks shimmering from the light. It just looks so good. Where this, it's cold, dead, you know, there's not really a lot going on in the surface. And so it's crazy to think about how much the, like a, like reduction can change uh, a Shino glaze, depending on when you reduce and how well it's reduced, right? But I do think that there is some cool moments on this piece specifically. There's this little, let's see if we can get this in focus. Yeah, there we go. This little like chunk, it looks like a tooth. I am really like that piece. I also like the, the angle in which it bends, right? Like this bending open there. Like, I think those are good parts of this pot. The terracotta things, I was actually kind of hoping that they would melt a little bit more, but they actually didn't really melt at all. Um, I'm taking it to pretty high temperature, so my prediction for this was that the object is that these things are going to bloat and, like, fall apart, but for some reason on this pot they didn't. Um, but I do in the future, I want to have objects that... Whole, I actually did a couple series of these as well of pots that sort of uh, are finished in the kiln, right? The object is finished, uh, the form is altered through the heat, right? And so that was a cool little process that I was working on. Maybe I'll show you guys one of those tomorrow. But anyway, that's kind of it on this. Um, I think I want to do more of these things in the future just because I want to be making like little monsters out of thrown objects. And so this seems like it's a pretty natural response to that idea of making it uh, like characters or monsters or stuff like that. But let's get it over here. But thank you guys so much. Let's see how I can get this to look very... Um, maybe like this. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, now to get back to our normal, our scheduled program. <laughs> See you guys in a second. Peace. All right, and we're back. Hey, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed that object history. For you, it was five minutes. For me, it was literally one second since you last saw me. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I think those objects that I made there are pretty cool. A lot about, like, addressing problems in ceramics. Addressing the problem that you made yourself. And so... Here we are. We got it's at 22 minutes, so my head cam is probably going to overheat here in a second. Get that spiral.
great. This one's really, I can feel it's really wonky already. But that's okay. I mean, did we freaking address that thing? Holy cow, guys, look at that. We gotta make sure we thicken up that rim there. A little bit too thin. Going back down to the bottom here. Oh, here we go. Flange out. Great. Okay. I would go a little bit more, but I'm a little bit worried about that that bottom ripping. And so this one will be kind of nice. We'll try to do something cool on this. We gotta get that water out of that interior there. Sometimes you'll see them fissure at the bottom. It's just sometimes I just leave that water in the bottom there. It'll rip the bottom sometimes. Sometimes it looks cool. Sometimes they fall over and they almost look like a fallen tree trunk, which is like really epic. So here we go. One, two, three. I already ripped that. Do you see? Oh. Yo, chill out, bro. <laughs> All right, we're just going to make sure we kind of addressing that rip right now so that we don't mess it up as much all right taking our fingers and really just ripping this open here and saying hey you're not done yet buddy you're not done yet ah, chill look at that guys really so cool we left that thickness on the top we started it out wide so then we get to end it off also really wide. And so these are like the good, the good traditional tree forms are always right underneath. It's the thinnest point, right? It has like a sense of drama and then explodes outward, right? It flowers to the sun, right? Uh, and you can see that interior. Oh, you can see right there. Look that fissure. That might, that's going to grow and that's going to rip. These might do that too, but I'm mostly worried about this will all be okay. It's right here and in this area, you see how it dips down. Wherever it's dipping down, there's more tension there because it's having to support more weight, but there's nothing underneath there. Usually it's a spiral that's supporting that uh, to keep it from turning, but when it's, it loses its integrity there, right? The more and more I spin, the longer and more wet it was too, uh, it's just gonna keep on growing. So you'll see probably, if you ever see on some of the pots that they do that, that's what's happening. You got a weird little thing here. Oh man, it's really a shame. Look at that, guys. I don't know what to do about that. Loose. Let go. Catch. Let go. Catch. Let go. Catch. Soften this edge a little bit. All right. And how are we going to mess with this? I think we're going to do the classic rip open. And we'll rip open here, right? We'll let that exist like that, right? And so we'll just carry that sort of pattern of that rippage all the way through. And hopefully, it doesn't look too... Weird there. A little weird, but not too bad, right? It's within tolerance. It's acceptable. Acceptable! Do you know that um, the, if you ever watched Adventure Time growing up, there was a guy, his name was Lemon Grab, right? And he's this lemon dude, and he always screams, and he goes, unacceptable! It's pretty cool. I always thought he was like, one of the most memorable characters, or at least my favorite. He has a cool like series, like 
he has a cool couple episodes that are focusing on his like duality of his mentality and his like raging narcissism i think he's actually a pretty interesting character i like him a lot okay we're gonna have this one second we're gonna have the one that i made earlier for the short that's gonna be right here I mean, just look at this one, guys. Oh, I gotta show you guys a better angle of this pot. Look at that. Freaking, oh my God, damn. We gotta get the last pot here. I have a feeling my head cam is gonna die in a second, so I'll hurry up and get this and I'll cut to the last short and then we'll end off again with a, a little object. I kind of don't want it. Maybe I'll have it in front of me here. There we go. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Strong mentality. Peace. Hold on. What's what's down here? <laughs> Peace out, guys.